I start off with uh, six momentum personally. I, okay, so <laughs> apparently the intro is being weird. Whatever, I'll address that later. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is the second session of Star Trek Fenrir. Uh, for the uninitiated, uh, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. Uh, if you want to know what setting we're in, uh, we are set in the Star Trek Online era, more specifically the year 2410, and we are set in the Sabine Expanse, which is the sort of like little uh, area of space that the old USS Ophion explored. Uh, you don't have to have watched Ophion to enjoy this game, though I will say you will catch a few references and even a few subtle character choices uh, if you decide to go back and watch them. You can find that on YouTube, but... Uh, all you really need to know is that uh, this crew is uh, set on a Cerberus class and so far has had a really good time. Uh, just before we get to that, though, I have to do a little bit of shilling. Uh, right now, uh, as I've said for a while, uh, Twitch and Patreon are sort of my sources of income while I'm searching for a new job, which in today's market is fun. Um, that means whatever support you can provide, be it a follow, sub, donation, bits, to patron, whatever, it's all appreciated. Just make sure to take care of yourselves first. Um, with that out of the way, uh, we're just going to jump right into things, and what that means is a opening monologue, uh, and that's going to come from Captain Archuleta. So, Captain, if you would take it away. Sure. <clears throat> Captain's log, stardate 87113.3. The Fenrir is on standard patrol after making our delivery to the slot. Starfleet has dispatched an ambassadorial team to handle the Azeth and their queen. I hear only whispers about the progress, but nothing concerning for now. Things seem to be going as well as they can be, establishing official contact with the new species. Though I don't relish the thought of them using Federation territory for their hunting grounds. The surviving USS Icarus crew had managed to transport their vessel, ironically, back to Deep Space Day Dallas with the help of our engineering team. The proverbial mountain of 25 years worth of sensor readings will no doubt shed some light on how the Azath managed to cross the deep space between Andromeda and the Milky Way. I know my mentor, Marak, will be interested in any conclusions from that data set. Computer, remind me to forward the final report to him when it comes in. In the interim between our delivery to the SLA, I decided to look into Ensign Jensen's recent admission to sickbay and subsequent visit by our chief engineer. I didn't think I'd be taking disciplinary action so soon into my command but it's better to set an example now and prevent further grab-assing. I've requested Mr. Maddock and Commander Rass join me in my ready room shortly. Alrighty. So, sure enough, uh, there's a beep at your ready room door, and after you let them in, in steps Mr. Rass and Mr. Maddock. Mr. Maddock, thank you for joining us. How are you doing, Captain? Quite well. I've been looking over your service history. You served on a vigilant class in the Omicron Reacquisition Unit under Captain Pinecker. You were reported directly to me, yes? Yes, ma'am. I knew your name was familiar. And prior to that, it looks like you were under an investigation for breaking the temporal prime directive. And then you were off the grid for quite some time. Uh, you would have to refresh me as to which investigation you're talking about, ma'am. Mm, so more than one then. Whenever you're working with uh, temporal mechanics, uh, you tend to be investigated quite a few times. Mm. Everything was approved by the Daystrom Institute whenever I got there. All right. Well, I've spoken to Ensign Jensen in lieu of a rather sparse report from Dr. Saniri. Given your repeated history of bending the rules of not just the Federation, but space-time itself to suit your own impulses, it wasn't difficult to conclude that foul play was involved in Sick Bay, especially with how very, very, very talkative the Ensign is. I want you to answer with yes or no here. Did you exert force on Ensign Jensen to render him unconscious? No, ma'am. You didn't? Keep in mind, I've talked to Dr. Saniri as well as the Ensign. The intent was not to make him unconscious, so therefore the answer to your question is still no. Really? 
He described it as a Vulcan nerve pinch type movement. Right. And the Vulcans, whenever they perform it, overwhelm the uh, victim's mind with telepathic abilities. I'm human. I do not have those abilities. How can I perform a Vulcan neck pinch? Well, the end result was the same either way. It, I'm not quite sure how to explain that. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not a Vulcan. You have plenty of medical data showing that. Um, maybe he just... <clears throat> Go on. Go on. Uh, maybe he just... I've worked with a few... A lot of Ensign Jensen's. Um, things tend to become elaborated within their minds. Um, I mean, I don't really see how you can accuse somebody of using a Vulcan neck pinch to render them unconscious when you're not a Vulcan. And the question oh, I you didn't, stated. I didn't say that. I said exert he, force. He said it as a Vulcan neck pinch but uh regulations say the official disciplinary course of action for assaulting a fellow crewmate is a court martial and hearing to determine sentencing up to and including dishonorable discharge from starfleet how you managed to avoid that already escapes me officially mr maddock jensen is a vital member of this crew like any other of any rank unofficially however you have my gratitude for shutting him up. It's always the unofficially that keeps people out of trouble, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And out here, hesitation can get you killed. I need someone decisive. Someone who acts on their gut rather than pulling out a rule book. Especially when it comes to liability within the Fenrir. Jensen is going to create issues for us but it helps me sleep at night knowing I have a chief who will shut that down in a crisis by any means necessary. I expect you to keep him in line. I'll make sure the bulkheads are scrubbed every morning by him. Commander Rast. Yes, sir. Please requisition a counselor for the Fenrir at Starfleet's convenience. Ensign Jensen will be assigned mandatory hours in therapy as a consequence of wasting senior staff's time. So a very appropriate action, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Maddock? If you lie to me again, I'll have your quarters moved to the airlock. Is that a threat or a promise, ma'am? Maybe both. Don't threaten me Either with a good time. It. Mm. <laughs> You're dismissed to your stations. Uh, yes, ma'am. And then Maddock will leave. And Rast will follow Maddock out. Making it a point that Maddox goes through the door first. Understood. All right. So we'll cut to the bridge as you all take your stations. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, after maybe not even five minutes, mm -hmm. uh, Maddox, when you take your seat, uh, you're seeing that there is an incoming distress call. Uh, Captain... I'm getting a uh, distress call. Uh, do you want me to put it up on viewer or just audio? Uh, on screen. All right. I'll okay. <laughs> push the right buttons. And do yeah. Do, do. So what appears on screen is Star Trek typical, sort of that old VHS style where the video is garbled and you're just barely able to make out the person. Uh, they seem to be in an exosuit of some sort. Uh, and the voice is sort of calm but almost strained and the voice says thus uh, this is the vulcan Expedi expeditionary group on tracks epsilon one we require immediate assistance atmospheric conditions have proven too hazardous to the expedition to continue one team has already been lost their coordinates are enclosed Two members of the expedition, including myself, remain here at base camp Terval. We request extraction from the nearest Starfleet vessel. And then there's a pause, and then the message repeats. Are the coordinates of the lost crew different from where they're at? 
Um, I would yes. assume yes. Yes, the they they are on a different spot on the planet. Okay. Uh, set a course for the coordinates of who sent the message. And Williams is going to straighten up and say, Captain, I'd recommend we go to standing yellow alert until we ascertain the nature of the threat. Do it. And there should now be a handout for whoever wants to read it out. Got a little bit of feedback there. Mm -hmm. Who wants to read it? Uh, I mean, I'll do it. Uh, Tracks Epsilon 1 is registered by long range. Take two. It's registered by long range probes as a class H planet, marginally habitable, with arid conditions and very little surface water. The Vulcan Expeditionary Group came here to study the planet's atmosphere, as they'd never encountered a class H atmosphere clo so close to its sun, just 0 0.03 astral units away. So. Sounds okay. a little bit like Vulcan. Like arid, little water. Isn't that how Vulcans typically... Maybe they're trying to make a colony mm -hmm. out here? What's a... Do we, does anyone know what a Class H planet category designates? Can any of us roll for that? Um, I would say that it's common knowledge. I'm just trying to find okay. the official tagline uh, to tell you. But uh, while I'm searching for it, off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure an <clears throat> H is below a class because there's M, which is standard, quote unquote, Earth. Uh, uh, I have it pulled a, up. You got to go class. Uh, class oh, D okay. is planetoid or moon. Class H is generally uninhabitable. Uh, then class J would be a giant, would be a gas giant. So it's kind of like, right right there where it's like it could be habitable if done right but i think i think they're the ones that are mostly done with uh terraforming mm -hmm. a class h planet or moon is usually characterized as uninhabitable by humans but sometimes vi uh, sometimes viable for other races uh such a body a planetary body could contain an atmosphere consisting of oxygen and argon So this is you said this is common knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I would also say is that uh, for the purposes of an away mission, um, normally you would be required to pay a momentum cost uh, to take environmental suits, but because the atmosphere of the planet is hostile to life. Uh, you are given an, an environmental suit for free, so you don't have to spend any momentum on it. Um, however, what I would say, and uh, we'll have to try and keep ourselves honest on this, um, is that while you're in an environmental suit, uh, all difficulty on control tasks increases by one. And if it matters, uh, mechanic-wise, there is a mechanic if you are exposed to the atmosphere. Like, you don't just immediately die. Um, but there is a mechanic which you probably want to avoid at all costs. <laughs> you said adds one difficulty to control? Mm-hmm. So, a uh, appropriate amount of screen time passes, and you arrive in system. And I'm going to put us on this map because it actually shows uh, visually what's going on, but I'll describe it audially in a moment. So, when somebody puts Tracks Epsilon 1 on the screen, uh, what you're seeing is almost like a black void in space. Um, it is quite literally a almost a... A hole where the planet is it's not a black hole uh, but it is a a black void of sorts and I will allow anyone who wants to to roll me in a reason and science and the ship will assist you with a sensor science the difficulty here is a zero <clears throat> can't really science I'm not uh, a good sciencer I'll roll for the ship I'll I'll do the science just You're because I have okay so reason science mm -hmm. 
Right. And the ship was sensor science. Okay. Uh, this is to generate momentum. Yep. Everybody okay with me giving him a threat for an extra dice just to get a little extra momentum? I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Make it show. Uh, yeah, do, 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 do. Let me see if I can <laughs> bullshit something. Um. <laughs> what did we get? Boosting power to the sensor, so therefore I can use power systems as a focus. Done. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, three successes. Uh, hold on. With, uh, what is it called? Technical expertise. Uh, whenever I tend to task assisted by ships, computers, or sensors. You can re-roll. I can re-roll a d20, so mm -hmm. I'm going to re-roll that zero. Because that's how this shit works. Mm -hmm. I'm a good engineer. <laughs> Hacking. All right, four, four momentum. Four Very nice. And Matic, what you learn is a new handout. Uh, 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 Ooh. Um, I'm Captain. I'm seeing changes on uh, track as plan one. Um, it seems that a thick silicate gas has uh, bonded with oxygen. Um, the air is now unbreathable, so we have to wear EV suits. Uh, <clears throat> uh, these silicate ions that are formed, um, they absorb light waves. Um, so that means very little, less than, I'd say, 0 0.03 to 0 0.04% uh, percent of the light that hits the planet mm -hmm. um, is actually visible on the planet. And so it's probably going to be very, very dark. Uh, the temperature has reduced significantly, and um, if you were able to, we were if we were able to find an area where we didn't have any, where we, we would be able to take off our EV suits, we would still have to deal with sub-zero temperatures. Um, what, so here's my, I guess, out of character, but part of this, um, the light is absorbed by these ions. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to use flashlights still on the surface, or would those also be... Uh, if you give me a momentum to ask the question, I will answer that for you. <clears throat> we'll find out in person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. We'll find out when we get there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Who's in charge of scanners? Uh, normally it's Mr. Matthew Black, but since he's not here. But I can no I can one? play in his uh, <laughs> in his steed if we really need him to be here. I'm looking for life science. Ah, so uh, Matthew Black, kind of uh, Lieutenant Matthew Black, kind of you know dances his fingers across the the screen and says, uh, Captain, I'm having a, a very difficult time uh, cutting through the uh, interference on the planet. It seems that the uh, magnetic field of the planet is fluctuating, sir. Uh, it's going to make cutting through the interference a little bit more difficult. Uh, I would recommend perhaps either taking transport enhancers or uh, heading down in a shuttle if and when we send an away team, sir. Well, we still have the coordinates, right? You do, yes. So we know where to go. We just can't communicate with them and can't tell if there's anything else down there. We also Is probably there... shouldn't oh. use transporters, <laughs> so... Um, what were you saying? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Is, is there anything in orbit? Uh, no, there is nothing in orbit. Is there a sun? There is a sun. It's actually very close by. Oh, point, th point zero three AU. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, is there any sort of residual something that would show if anything from off the planet, like an anomaly off the planet or something off the planet is what caused the silicate. Oxygen um, I would say I'll give this to you free. Uh, you are not detecting any anomalies on the sensors other than the fact that the planet is quite literally a dark ball in space. So nothing, nothing in orbit, nothing in system, uh, nothing that would indicate a reason for why the planet has changed like this. 
And what I'm going to do here is Commander Rast. Uh, I would like you to roll me a Insight and Command, please. The difficulty here will be a 3, and you will have a focus, but I'm not going to tell you what this is for unless you succeed. Okay. Insight and Command. Mm hmm Okay. And since it is a difficulty 3, you may wish to spend momentum. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Spend one? I Sounds important. All right, we'll spend one. Okay. <laughs> All right, so with one oh. success, oh. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this succeed at cost because I think it's important. So it's almost if, Commander Rast, I mean, you, you've you gotten used to the, 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 the level of mines on a starship ship. Like, you, you are used to the number of mines that your telepathic or empathic abilities touch on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this is different. You're feeling a, almost like a low level pressure in the back of your mind that would seem to indicate that there is a presence here, but what that presence is or how to interact with that presence, you're not sure. So the in presence. the words of Deanna Troy, I sent something, Captain. Presence on the ship or on the planet? On the planet. Okay. I do sense something odd on the planet itself. I can't quite. Put a finger on it. What can you give me any more detail, Commander? There is an an alien mind that I cannot quite read or feel correctly. Does it seem like it's the Vulcans we're here for? No. Is it hostile? I cannot. I cannot tell. Uh, there's no real, no real true connection. Uh, the only thing I can describe it as is when you know you're being watched. Hmm. Are we being scanned at all? That would be a negative. Uh, there are okay. no signs that the planet has even registered your existence. Okay. Do you think, Commander, that if you were to go to the surface, that it would be overwhelming? No, quite opposite, Captain. I, I believe that if I can get closer, I might be able to. Uh, <coughs> I might be able to uh, eliminate some of the interference. All right. Well, I think we've discerned everything we possibly can, unless anyone else has any ideas. Um, we're gonna learn anything unless we go down there. Well, something we could probably check for real quick is uh, with us being close to the uh, wormhole to the Andromeda galaxy, and also having just recently interacted with an a uh, silicon based life form life from the Andromeda galaxy. Is there a probable reason for us to suspect that this could be a, their? form of terraforming for lack of better suggestions they just didn't know about the Vulcans on the planet the atmosphere on their ship supported us just fine without any sort of environmental changes They and uh, the queen seemed to be unencumbered by any sort of enhancements I do recall that she did seem to feel that <clears throat> transporting carbon-based life forms was difficult for them. And so it seems like we might be experiencing that kind of clash again. So I don't think there's anything else we can check. I would recommend um to your point to take a shuttle to the surface but because of the interference and the potential of emergency i think we should all take uh pattern enhancers as well okay um, elh uh yes. does matic recognize anything about this from his time in andromeda 
no, you are not. Uh, nothing is really catching your attention that would indicate that this is something you've seen before. Okay. And I'd suggest, uh, commanders, captain, that if at all possible, we perhaps place a comm beacon in orbit to attempt to boost our ability to communicate with the ship once we hit planet. Good idea. Yeah, any and all precaution here I think we should take. Uh, which is a great segue into, I think, that Commander Rast will be leading the away team. Okay, so Rast is definitely going. Any other volunteers? Uh, I'll go. Um, okay. In case I need to repair EV suits or there's technology or something that needs to be fixed I'd like to go as well captain the safety of the senior staff is my responsibility that sounds good and I would, I would like for us to take a medical officer yeah my medical officer LL is going he's a denobulin okay. oh, I love denobulins all right so, the uh, four aforementioned Rast, Matic, Williams, Alel, uh, you all pile in to your Hades-class runabout and begin heading down to the planet. Now, my question is, which among you is actually doing the piloting? <laughs> if, if, if I recall correctly, we're all fair yeah. hands at piloting. Yeah, yeah. we're all pretty is, good. Is, do, you want, do you want to rock, paper, uh, scissors for it? Uh, can Matic set up autopilot? <laughs> um... What? What's the skills for piloting? Uh, for this particular task, it would be a control and a con, uh, assisted by the shuttle's engines and con. I'll take it. Okay. The difficulty here is a baseline of two. However, since you've given me threat, I'm going to spend a little bit to make it a difficulty three. And the reason for that is the moment you hit the planet's atmosphere, the view screen turns to jet blackness. Like, even your running lights are having a difficulty just penetrating <clears throat> this darkness. Awesome. Oh, that's um, encouraging. This is as nice. we hit the uh, atmosphere, that's whenever Matic will release, like, the, the combo booster way. probe. Yeah, the mm -hmm. combo. -y. And um, would we say helm operation for focus? Most definitely. Okay. And we do have um, some thingy things, so I'm going to spend one. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to... And I'm just going to take this opportunity for Williams to make a snide comment to Rast. Uh, well, Commander, from what I could read of your service jacket, you know, the bits that weren't blacked out, I hope some of the stuff that was blacked out was piloting. I hope so, too. Uh, Chip always has a focus, right? Yep. So. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. <laughs> So here's what happens. Uh, you are, you know how on a plane and, oh, no. you know, you're just going along and then suddenly you hit like a bunch of turbulence and like you feel your stomach kind of fall. Mm -hmm. It's sort of that same thing here where for a brief terrifying moment, the shuttle dips rapidly into the atmosphere and you're almost in momentary free fall. Um, and the process actually goes on longer than a moment. It, it stretches on and on, and you start to wonder, oh, God, did we lose engines? Did Ras just literally nosedive us into the planet? Uh, you're starting just to worry. Like old days. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spend a lot of threat to do this, but I'm going to spend the threat. It's going to strand us. Is you actually, because you have failed this role, what happens is the shuttle actually does crash. There is a sudden, both momentous force that buckles all of you from your stations, your seats, etc. And the shuttle has crash landed onto the planet. Is um, there a way to spend determination to pull it out at the last moment? Uh, if you give me the two momentum you have, uh, I will lessen the impact of the crash. Can I give determination too? Uh, no, because you are a supporting character, you may not. That's um, the trade-off. Okay. Can I try to determine what, how Rest screwed up and try to correct it? Um, I would say this would be very difficult to do in the moment, but yes, it is possible. 
Uh, I mean, we could try it. I have such a good role. I've for got. That I've too. got. I've also <laughs> also got an idea that could potentially. I mean, it's either 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 or. Well, you can't go wrong either way. I mean, we could could go very wrong, but mm-hmm. or you, Matt, if you want to take this one, I'm I'm happy to let you have that responsibility. All right, so Matic, let's have you attempt a daring engineering. The difficulty here will be a five. And if you succeed, you will not crash into the planet. You will land gracefully, gracefully, quote unquote. Uh, well, I'm glad I let you take this one. Is this our is this, this is our why you, this is why you gave me yeah. the idea because you know what this I'm is about our to single do. runabout. This is your yeah, single. This is runabout. our single Hades class runabout. No oh, shit, I don't know if I click daring or not. Daring. I'm annoyed. Engineering. <laughs> Work on that. Uh, um. I get so I start off with two. I get a free three. I get a free D twenty because of I know my ship. Mm-hmm. So then I need to oh, give boy. you uh, two. I'll Where give you five threat for the five dice. Five threat for the five dice. Excellent. That gives me I mean, my captain. Back. You were working on your angry face, so you make it to use it. <laughs> we were uh, we're leaves on the wind. <laughs> Watch it. We soar. Or, Hopefully you know. not. I think, we're, uh, I think we're rocks in a lake. Power systems? I'll give you power systems. Right. Zen. Hey! hey. Oh, look at that. That is oh. seven successes. So you get God. that two momentum. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> the goat. So <laughs> just, just a small retcon. So you are still going into a nose drive, but Matic, you realize... Uh, after a few like quick dances of fingers across the console, this isn't Rast's fault, actually. The silicate nature of the atmosphere is actually sapping power from your engines. So right at the last moment, what you do is you reroute that power and sort of buff the impulse engines so that Rast, right as that last moment, right before you would hit, you pull up. And instead of, you know, like crashing nose first, you sort of skim, skip a few times and then land a li- lot more gracefully than you would have otherwise. Uh, quick I, question. I, yes. Knowing this now about the silicate draining power, do I have to? Do we have to worry about um, it draining power from our EV suits? Potentially. Can I roll for that? <laughs> I would say if you give me one momentum to ask the question, I will answer. Oh, well, um, we're at four. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like you're going to need it. And we didn't wreck the runabout. Yeah. Well, it's well, freaking if, out, by the way. Just what if, freaking what out. if I give you two threat instead of one momentum? I'll take the two threat. The answer is yes. A prolonged exposure to the atmosphere will play havoc with your power systems, ranging from your EV suits to your tricorders to your flashlights. Um, can we estimate how long the Vulcans have been in their EV suits? Uh, that you would need to find a Vulcan to ascertain that. Also, can we? Is, is there a way? F- go ahead. Sorry. Is there a way for us to assume how long someone could be in an EV suit before it's too late? Uh, that is an excellent question for our doctor. Uh, doctor, so pose question. Yeah. So, uh, Lieutenant Allel, if you would like to roll me a reason medicine at a difficulty of one. I will give you an answer. Um, one d twenty. Uh, two d twenty. Okay. And I have prosthetics and cybernetics. Eh, unfortunately, no. Meh. Forensic science. I'll give it to you. Yes. Uh, okay. One success is all you need. You think that. Best case, uh, the operational time is approximately 16 hours. Uh, so she tries to interject if anyone's having a conversation. And she says, so according to my tricorder, we have about 16 hours of uh, power in our EVA suits if we leave the, the shuttle. Um, GM, can I mm-hmm. maybe do an estimate as to how long I think a, say, 
phaser power cell will last? Uh, or would that be an engineering question? I would say you can either give me a momentum or you can attempt a roll. I'll attempt a roll. Okay. Roll me a reason security, also at a difficulty of one. Okay. Uh, does my focus in um, hand phasers? It most uh, definitely apply. would. Ooh, Ooh, so a success with a complication. I'm going to take threat instead of the complication. Okay. Um, so what you are know, Williams, is that each of you, and I'm going to let you guys track this on your own, so just keep yourselves honest, each of your phasers has three shots. All right, so I'll just let everybody know. Uh, so you're going to get two, maybe three shots out of these things before they kick. Anybody bring a knife? <laughs> Rast just nods. Always. I have Not a so bad. in my med kit. Well, I believe it's an earth thing. Any uh, landing you can walk away from. You know, that drop reminded me a little bit of the Jovian run. It was interesting. Um... While they've been talking, Mag's been going over data. Um, mm -hmm. What are the chances of us flying this some bitch out? I would say probably 50 50, but you're definitely going to need to scavenge some parts from the uh, outpost here if you want to get this thing into the air again. Um, that or you have to call the ship and then you have to deal with an angry captain, but. Let's Matic to uh, Finrear. I'll do a little Matic to Finrear. Uh, can I hear him? Uh, you can, but it's almost like he's through a bad mm. telephone, so his voice is very distant and it's very garbled, but you are able to hear him just barely. Yeah, uh, I read you, Commander. Um, we have landed on the surface. Uh, we are about to get into our suits and try to find the Vulcans. Um, we may need to salvage some equipment to get back out, but everything's okay, Captain. So who crashed my runabout? Autopilot. And then I'll just end the communication. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Nice. Nice. Just... <laughs> Break it up, Captain. He's never been hung up on before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I think if we can just get this thing back up to the ship, it'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. All right, so uh, we will cut just a little bit ahead to after all of you getting into your suits, opening the door, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And indeed, when you open that door and you step out into the alien wilderness, uh, it is pitch dark. Like, even your flashlights are only getting about one to two meters out before they just sort of, you know, vanish. So if you, like, stray more than two meters away from someone, like, you can't even see them, even with their flashlights. That's how dark it is. So before LL speaks up, before we, like, you know, walk out in this. We need to place some kind of beacon or something on the runabout so we can find it again. I agree, and I think we should uh, tether to each other um, at, two, at two meter, at one meter count, uh, two meter counts, and stay within view. We may want to do a stress test of how distantly we can be away from each other and still have communications. Mm -hmm. Well, we were able to reach out to the ship. Something I could do is I could adjust all of our comm badges to emit like a homing beeping sound, a very audible one. And uh, we could be able to identify everybody by uh, audio um, in case all in case, you know, the flashlight decides to go out now. You know, we'd be able to have audio. We could basically just follow what bats do use a modified form of sonar vision manic i'm not going to pretend to understand what you just said 
but echo location. Yeah, I think that like one. the uh, sounds like Earth, a good idea. Earth species, what are they called? Um, bats. Dolphins. Bats. I think that's sonar. It's the same thing, right? Add a character. I think they're this. They're close enough. Okay. Well, she's like uh, biology, xenobiology. So, she's interested. Anyway, I kind of get what you're saying. So, how would we do this? How do we set this up? Um, as you know, that whenever you activate it, you do hear the audible clicking sound. I could just adjust that audible clicking sound to a higher uh, level of volume, and then also it kind of activates, then deactivates, activates, then deactivates um, kind of system. Man, um, it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes to do. Is there a way for you to use that same principle to help us map this region? It would be possible, however, it would have to be a small handheld device that would be able to map what's directly in front of us. Um, it would probably be easier if we could somehow use the ship's sensors to perform a similar thing. Uh, we could probably use the, uh, not disruptor, um, what's the deflector array? Use the deflector array to try to do a massive echolocation burst. Um, it may even send a signal to the ship to show where we are in case we miss check-in time. They could have an idea of where to start, and they would also have a very basic uh, map uh, regional layout. I, just, I mean, since Rass is in charge, Williams will turn to him and say, Commander, I believe if we can find a way to uh, use the deflector way to potentially do a bio neural transponder for each of us would be uh, would be a good way to take care of being able to find each other. Well, we only have six. My techno hours, babble for the so day. Should we do this on the shuttle real fast? Yeah, I agree. Let's uh, do it in the protection of the the shuttle. That way, we uh, don't use up our suits at all. All right. Um, is is the deflector dish or is the deflector array on the shuttle damaged? Uh, luckily, I'm going to say it is not. Uh, however, I will say that doing such a pulse uh, will drain some of your shuttle's power. Okay. So in order to do this, I would like Matic, I'd like you to do a daring engineering. Let's call this a difficulty three after a little bit of threat. And then uh, while he's doing that, um, I would like either Commander Rast or Commander Williams, since you guys have your good con scores, I'd like you guys to roll me a reason con, and you can assist each other on this, so whoever wants to do the main roll, etc., uh, this is also going to be at a difficulty of three. Um, prototype engineering or quantum mechanics? Or uh, power systems? I'll give you prototype. All right. Uh, GM, if I did the main role, would my survival focus come into play here? It most definitely would. And I'll, I'll assist Williams. Okay. Okay. So, John, as a reminder to assist, you just roll the 1d20. Okay. And uh, Williams roll the 2d20. Okay, so two successes from Williams oh, so already. Same, same roll, just 1d20? Correct. Okay. Uh, do y'all mind if I spend a momentum to get uh, an extra dice for my roll? Go for it. Okay. Nothing. All right, so unfortunately no help there. So we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's see what Maddox roll is. Unless, I, I don't know Ooh. if Helm Operation helped out at all. But. Uh, Helm Operation would have applied, but you rolled a 19, unfortunately. So. Ah, okay. Uh, all right, so let's do with Matic, then we'll do with the con task. So Matic, you are able to set up this uh, echolocation, this burst. And because you've succeeded, and I'm actually going to let the Helm check uh, that Williams and Rast were dealing succeed. <laughs> so all three of you working together, um, you're able to determine two things. 
The first is that by the grace of whatever higher power there is, you've actually landed fairly close to the outpost itself. You didn't obviously land on the outpost's landing pad, but you're close enough that you think you can make it there without getting totally lost. <coughs> the second thing that you are able to collectively find is that the coordinates to like the where the team was lost, if you remember the distress call, there was coordinates for the other team. <laughs> Um, that is in the completely opposite direction of you, about uh, two kilometers from your current landing spot. Uh, would we be able to go to the outpost and then back to uh, the away team that's missing, or would that not be enough time? Uh, there's plenty of time to do that. Well, assuming you don't get lost. Uh, the GM snicker intensifies. I mean, you I know what? Uh, Even better idea. Alel, uh, let's go check out the uh, missing away team, and we'll meet back up with Reston Williams. Let's split uh, the party. Splitting up. I was, I was actually mad. You beat me to it. I was just gonna suggest that Williams and LL go search for the missing away team, and you guys go to the outpost. So it's fine. Let's, let's split up. We can do more damage that splitting way. Splitting up. Have you guys never seen an Earth movie? <laughs> but she grabs her shit. The. Uh... The away team, their away team, is probably in dire, dire conditions at this point. Um, Maddox, however, uh, you should probably come with me to the uh, to the outpost because we need to gather parts for the shuttle, and you're more qualified to do that. Hi, Commander. Um, is there a way that using this echolocation burst, I can adjust it to be sort of like a homing beacon sort of thing? to where using track quarters or using com badges we're able to somewhat know how to get back. Yeah, I would say that part of this check was that, so yeah, you could definitely do that. Okay. And likewise would be would we be able to if our com badges don't have the range in this mire, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, would we be able to use the runabout as you know, but the same principle that we're using the the com beacon to communicate with the ship. Can we use the runabout to communicate over short distances by piggybacking off of yeah, kind of making a repeater? Array? A repeater, yeah. yeah. I would say yeah. yes. You could definitely do that, and I'll give that to um, you free. Maddox will also open up one of the engineering. Uh, will open up uh, the transporter, and he'll hand uh, Alel and Williams uh, transport enhancers, pattern buffers, nice, and just be like, in case you find the team and you need an immediate beam back, hopefully these will be able to help. Um, I would suggest wasting as little time as possible whenever you do utilize these. <laughs> Aye. Sounds good. Um, also, Jim, before we leave, mm -hmm. um, I can't quite remember the rule. It's I either have to give you momentum or threat, but I want to take a phaser rifle. A phaser rifle. Uh, I believe that is an escalation That's cost escalation. of one. Uh, yes, it is a, actually, no, it is a it's momentum two. and escalation oh, two. So it would yeah. be one momentum and two threat. Yeah. Okay. And so what I would say is that the phaser rifle has five shots. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, interestingly, uh, oh, what I would say before I do that is that because he has paid that cost, all of you could take phaser type threes if you so wished. Yeah. Give me. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Might as well. <laughs> All right. So I'll let them know they've got the five shot. Okay. Maximum. So interestingly, you guys have split the party, so I'm gonna have to juggle the maps here. Um so let's deal with uh Commander <laughs> Rast and Matic first. And we'll bounce back and forth between the parties. Uh so Matic and Rast, uh you guys are I don't want to say stumbling through the darkness, but you are proceeding in such a way that there's times when you're not sure if your feet are going to touch anything solid. It's just that dark out there. And uh, eventually... Um, oh, go ahead. Matic is using the rear end of the rifle as sort of a walking stick. Okay. Um, he's trying his best to not, you know... Oh, hey, 50-foot cliff. Okay. Well, the good news is that uh, you don't <clears throat> run into any 50-foot cliff cliffs in fact uh eventually uh your butt of the phaser rifle clangs on metal and i can finally put at least two of you on this map 
And in fact, if you were to take uh, the flashlights mounted on your wrist or on your helmet and you look down, uh, you do see that there is some form of a uh, metal walkway uh, that has been inlaid into the ground. Uh, Commander, I think we have found the... Uh... The outpost, for sure. Um, Rass is going to reach out with his mind. Okay. Nice. I would like you to do a control and a command. Now, difficulty is going to depend on the answer to this question. What are you trying to sense exactly? He is trying to uh, sense uh, direction of any sort of uh, intelligent mind. Okay. Uh, I will make this a difficulty of three. <laughs> Since apparently Maddox can do Vulcan neck pinches, is it possible for him to assist? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Exert force. <laughs> force. Uh, let's go ahead and use one of the uh, one of the thingy things. One of the momentum. Momentums. Okay. That's it. I'll get the name of it eventually. Ah, shit. I got There's it. Don't worry. I, could, I got it. I found it. And focus wise. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Yeah, no, I don't think I have a focus. Okay. Oof, Two successes. So what I would say here is that you remember that pressure that I said that you felt in the back of your mind? Mm -hmm. uh, it has amplified, I don't want to say tenfold, but maybe fivefold. So it's definitely ramped up. But again, you're still not able to determine what this pressure is, only that it is an alien presence. Uh, I just turned to Maddox. Well, the alien presence that I felt upon the ship is closer here, so be on your guard. Does it feel hostile to you? I cannot feel any intention. Hmm. I do not know if um, maybe maybe it is not even aware of us. Hard to uh, assign it a feeling if it doesn't know we're here and um i'm assuming these uh well assumption being what it is mm -hmm. uh these black lines are they sort of like guide rails sort of guide yes. wires yeah so you could conceivably follow uh the guide wires to what you're hoping is the outpost proper okay and what i would um, say is you want to proceed to the south using uh Basically, okay, hey, this is kind of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to kind of guesstimate uh, where the landing pad and possible, like, additional shuttle parts are? Or um, I would say you are able to at least tell that you are on the right track in the right direction, but it would require a reason and a con to ascertain specific directions. And the difficulty on that would be a two. We'll just wander around. Okay. Sure. So you all proceed through the darkness, following the path, following the guidelines. And again, just the omnipresent darkness is uh, enough that it's it's hard to see anything. Oh, well, there yeah. we go. <laughs> and Rast almost, and I guess Matic and Rast, you both notice almost at the same time, on the very edge of the light that is able that you're able to see with your flashlights, there are two forms on the ground, humanoid. Uh, they appear to be uh, what might be Vulcans in EV suits. But they are on the ground, and it does not appear that their suits are powered. Are they moving at all? They are not moving. Um, Matic will hold up the uh, phaser rifle, walk over to it, and uh, kind of like poke it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when you poke it, uh, you actually roll it over, and what you see is that the faceplate of the EV suit has been shattered, and the Vulcan, the dead Vulcan on the other side, uh, there is almost <clears throat> like the green blood that streams from their eyes and their mouth, so it was probably not a very fun death for this Vulcan, implying that that's going to be fun, but not a fun death. Fun is a uh... logical is there a way to identify the body? 
I was about to ask the same thing, like dog tags, that type of... Uh, I would say that uh, for free, yes, you are able to recover the quote-unquote dog tags of a a gentleman named Menos, M-E-N-O-S. And you would know that Menos was the one who sent the original distress call. Okay. Um, Was he the one that was in charge or... Uh, he He's was one... one of the leaders, yes. Okay. Um, Medic will walk over to the other dead Vulcan and uh, grab his tags as well. Okay. The name of this Vulcan is Valar. Is that name important or... No, I'm just giving you a name. Okay. Uh, Medic to... Uh, Commander Williams and Fenrir. Williams here. Ben here. Uh, we have found uh, our Commander Rast and I are at uh, the outpost. Um, we have found and identified two vo- uh, Vul- two deceased Vulcans, one of them being Minos, the one that uh, sent the distress call, and then one of the technicians, uh, Valar. Uh, we have their identification. Um, what? How should we proceed with? Uh, um, do their their face plates? Do they look like they were damaged, broken, like in a fight or something? Did it or like depressurization kind of thing? I would say that a significant amount of force was applied to the face plates. No. Um. There's. <laughs> Reason to believe that there may be something hostile here, as it uh, appears the faceplates were broken with a high power of force. Um, I'd suggest be on your toes, uh, other away team. Always, you too, and remember, you got five shots on the rifle, three on the hand phaser. Make them count. Proceed with caution, away team. Uh, Captain, did you happen to pick up the uh, echolocation burst that we uh, performed on the shuttle uh, location? And I'm going to spend two threat. Fenrir's cut off. Captain? I think she Captain. hung up on you this time. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, I've had worse. <laughs> All right. So you guys proceed up uh, stairs, almost stumbling up the stairs, and you eventually uh, see an actual wall in front of you of a prefab unit. And what you would notice immediately is that the walls have been torn up with breaches and tears all along the alloy plating. And there's a door set into the wall in front of you. Uh, however, the door is not opening. In fact, just looking around, what you can see, the, it appears to be that there is zero power, not even emergency power, uh, anywhere within the outpost. Because there should be at least some sort of running lights or some, you know, base level system that should be running. Nothing. The entire thing is dead. Um, Do we happen to have those... Uh... Or does this door, is this door one of those that, like, you take the panel off, you pull the little lever, and... Yeah, I mean, you could manually get it open, no problem. Okay. Um, If our tricorders still work, I'm going to suggest to Commander Rest that we should scan the uh, gouges and other signs of uh, something trying to get into this place and see if we can't identify something. I agree completely. All right. So while you two are getting into the outpost, we're going to cut to the other part of the away team. So we'll go back to the theater of the mind for this one. So uh, Williams and Alel, uh, you all are proceeding through the darkness in the opposite direction. And I have a question for the two of you. Are either of you afraid of the dark? I think on some level, maybe everybody's afraid of the dark, but not, not overtly. <laughs> no. That means yes. 
I was just waiting for her to say, <laughs> well, I'm spending threat to make that's, one of you yeah, afraid. Yeah, <laughs> John read my mind. Uh, I'm um, yeah, s- I'm afraid of the dark. In that case, I'm going to spend two threat, and both of you uh, begin fe- feeling extremely anxious. Uh, the darkness seems overwhelming. In fact, this is probably one of your worst nightmares, uh, where you're starting to maybe even hallucinate or see things that aren't there, or at least you hope that aren't there. Got this really weird feeling of dread, Commander. Yeah, you know, me too. Let's, um, maybe we'll pick up our pace a little bit. Hey, how was your, um, did you ever run the Academy Marathon? Uh, no, I did not. I'm not much oh. of a, I'm not really into running. Okay, well, <laughs> you're about to get an education. We're going to double time it. Oh, lead the way. Are we tethered together? You are. And in fact, I'm going to require a fitness and con from each of you at difficulty of two. (laughs) Okay. And if either of you fails at this fitness con, that tether is getting broken. Nah. Okay. Fitness and con. Mm -hmm. Difficulty two. All right, Alel does fine. Very nice. Doop. <laughs> so, of course, it's Williams that does Obviously. it. Obviously. So, Williams, you get a little overzealous, and yeah. uh, <laughs> you uh, you start to sprint forward, but you do so so rapidly that uh, <sighs> what happens is the tether snaps. Alel catches herself, but Williams, you end up falling onto your face, and I'm actually going to roll some challenge dice here. Uh, you take three stress damage. Now, because you are in an environmental suit, you only take two damage because the environmental suits have a okay. resistance of one. Gotcha. Stress two. Got it? Um, I LL runs over, kneels down. Commander, are you okay? Scans him. Uh, not, not hurt. Just my pride. All right. Stands up and, like, holds her hand out. I may yeah, have crashed the shuttle, but I didn't crash myself <laughs> You crashed all Listen, of us. Go big or go home, man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll take her hand and, and lift myself to my feet. And just kind of dust off the front of my EV suit and say, all right, so. Why don't you slow down? Yeah, maybe slow and steady is the okay, way to go here. Okay, speed walk. Lieutenant. Let's go. Right now. I'm scared. <laughs> Please. Aye, aye, Lieutenant. Let's go. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to the speed walk, so you can never, like, have... What's the rules for speed walking? You can't have two feet off the ground at the same time. Right? Just... <laughs> Some, something ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it it takes you. I mean, obviously, because now you, you are literally having to hold hands. Uh, it takes you quite a bit to get where you're going. Um, but when you get there, uh, you come across a large crater. Uh, you're not really able to determine how far across this crater is. Only that there seems to be some form of a crashed ship here. Um, You would have to get closer and scan it to be sure. But this ship is probably about the size of a Defiant class or a Nova class. So it's a a fairly large ship. Oh. Damn. And it's in a crater. It is in a crater. And this crater is between us and where we need to be. No, this crater is where you are trying to be. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, then I'm just gonna, uh, so this, this is where the, the missing away team is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna how, hit how my... How bad would your luck have to be if you were out doing surveying and a ship crashed on you? Oh. I mean, about... Equally as bad as if you were in that ship and it crashed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Probably. So I'm gonna hit the communicator on the, um, on the EV suit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and say, Williams to rest. Do we hear him? You do. Continue. Uh, Commander, we've located the probable location of the second away team. We're beginning our search now. What's your status? Uh, we have reached the outpost, and we are uh, going to be trying to go in shortly. Also looking for any sort of parts. Be aware that we believe that there may be something hostile. 
Understood. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Williams out. And I'll just look at LL and say. So yeah. So actually, while you're having that conversation, like the darkness is kind of getting to her. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like speed walking a little bit, trying to look stupid, so that it was more funny and less scary. But now that you've been standing there looking at a deep dark crater, her mind is kind of like caving in on itself a little and she thinks she sees something out of the corner of her eye and she starts to walk away don't even have to spend threat to do it i love it uh all right am i at all like distracted with my conversation i guess and don't with threat you are away? well heck that's great so i guess by the time i turn back then she's gone mm -hmm. um and i'll just That'll be around the time when we say, you know, William's out. And I'll say, well, Lieutenant, I guess we better. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm actually going to spend further threat because I have so much of it. Uh, both of you at the same time, maybe Williams, as you're trying to find the Lieutenant and the Lieutenant as you are walking away, uh, you each have come across a different body. Like it's not the same body. It's a different body. But you also come across two deceased Vulcans. And like the ones that Matic and Rast found, their faceplates have been shattered. So for like half a second, LL is still trapped in like the catatonic fear mm -hmm. of the dark. But after that, you know, going through the academy, her medical... Uh, expertise and instincts kick in and she scams the dead Vulcan in front of her. Very nice. I would like you to roll me a insight and medicine, please, at a difficulty of two. Okay. Xenovirology or xenoimmunology? Uh, I'll give it to you. And forensic science, too. I would definitely give you forensic science. Okay. Two successes, which is what you need. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So you confirm four things. The first, they are dead. The second, they died of asphyxiation, not wounds and not blunt force trauma. Three, their suit is breached in several key areas that exposes power points, cabling, and batteries. The fourth is that you're pretty sure that something else is at play here. There's something, something with their neurological pattern would seem to indicate that something tried to mess with their mind. So they're dead of asphyxiation. Mm -hmm. They have been, their suits have been punctured at power points ca with cables and batteries mm -hmm. and something else is fishy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's going to tap whatever comm area is on these defects. See, it's probably not a comm badge, but mm -hmm. um, and then she's going to realize she's not like actually around anyone. She's going to just tap and say, Commander. Lieutenant, where are you? I thought I've, got I saw a I've, got a, I've got a dead Vulcan here. I've got that. Well, that makes two. I guess I walked off. I thought I saw something by us, but I found a dead Vulcan here and they looks like according to my tricorder, they died of asphyxiation. Also, it looks like their suit's been punctured in several key areas that powered the suit. Something's weird. And it's going to get weirder because I'm going to spend threat and yeah. we'll, we'll do it on this map because we don't really need to see, uh, at least distances here. Um, so what happens is at the same time, so for both the wave teams, um, you're mid-sentence and Rast and Matic, you guys are just getting the doors to the prefab open when you hear a clattering sound behind you and the shambling forms of the Vulcans are beginning to rise up. And Alel, yeah, Alel, the Vulcan that was you were scanning literally jumps up at you. Same thing with you, Williams. Uh, uh, Thanks, I rest, hate it. Rest. <laughs> yeah. Rest, you just hear uh, Matic go, uh, it's Sia Mega again, and then just shoulder his rifle. Okay. 
All right, so that was the name of the station, right? Yeah, it was a uh, Psy, Psy Outpost. Yeah, good good memory is, there. Um, I guess is like is communicating. I guess, for lack of a better term, like a free action. Communicating is a free action yeah. as long as you are not like quoting the entire works of Shakespeare no. at me. Uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, Williams to away team. I've got contact. As do we. <laughs> Welcome to the party. All right. So because this is a surprise attack, I'm going to let the uh, Vulcans go first. Now, the good news, since this is our sort of first combat for the newbies, uh, the way this generally works is we pass back and forth between uh, enemy and player or enemy and ally. And there isn't a set initiative order, or at least not the way I do it. Um, the way it works is you all can choose who goes next. And as long as everybody gets a turn in the round, then you're good. Uh, but for first purposes, I'm going to say the Vulcan that Alel was scanning is going to act first. And that means, Alel, I'm going to need you to roll me a daring and security, please. Now, the difficulty on this is a one, and this is an opposed roll, meaning that uh, your successes are going to be compared to the Vulcan successes. Okay. And whoever ties or whoever wins that tie is going to be the successful melee combatant. Very nice. Three successes. The Vulcan nice. has only rolled two, so you actually even get a momentum off of that. So I'm going to let you flavor how you do this, allow, but you are able to maybe punch the, the Vulcan, maybe sidestep out of the way, but you are able actually not only to dodge out of the attack, but also deliver one of your own. Okay, so, um, use your cutting wit. <laughs> she doesn't have cutting wit. Um, she's gonna like you're gonna hear a scream in the com, mm -hmm. and uh, she's gonna say, "Commander, there's a <laughs> this Vulcan's not dead anymore." <laughs> And she's going to pull out her uh, phaser because she doesn't have time to grab her entire rifle. Mm -hmm. And she's going to basically roll out of the way and then fire. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you if you give me one momentum. Because otherwise it would just be a melee attack. Oh, okay. So she's just supposed to like, hit it yeah. with her hand. Your um, fist or your legs, or if you want to headbutt sure. it, we'll just, sure. We'll just uh, we'll have her try and kick the legs as she rolls. Yeah, boss and headbutt. Him. Just yeah, just headbutt. That's him. your job. <laughs> uh, I mean, we saw how yes. well I ran from point A to point B. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk actually trying to get into fisticuffs. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's, so uh, let's headbutt them and uh, break our uh, masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, break your masks. So Alel, I need you to roll me three challenge dice. Now there should be a challenge dice macro. Uh, if you haven't found that that uh, found that yet, I can walk you through finding it. Where is it? Uh, so if you go to the collection tab on the right hand side of your screen, uh, it looks like a bulleted list. Okay. Uh, under macros, right there yeah. at the top, there should be mm -hmm. challenge dice. Yeah. You want to put that in bar, and then show macro quick bar, and then there should be a button that appears on the map side of your screen. Be under the character portraits there. Hey, you found it. Excellent. So with three dice, what happens is uh, you sweep the leg, and sure enough, you <laughs> knock the Vulcan to the ground. Nice. And now it is the player's turn. So again, any four of you can, or any of the four of you can act. It does not have to be a specific person. Or it, it, there is no specific order is what I meant to say. I uh, might as well get it over with. All right. So All what right. are you doing, Mr. Williams? Uh, I am going to um, shoulder my rifle and fire. Okay. So that's going to be a control and a security for you. Remember, uh, because you are in an EV suit, control tasks are increased by one. So instead of a difficulty of two, this is a difficulty of three. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, all right. And you are at two momentum at the moment. Perfect. Um... I am going to spend a point of momentum here, too. Okay. All right. So, control. 
security and uh, do my does my hand phaser focus fly? I imagine yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Unfortunately, Ugh. unless you want to determination that. Um. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's use some determination. Uh, the value that I'm gonna use is um. Flare is the difference between artistry and mere competence. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to do a, uh, a Captain Kirk roll, and I'm going to come up with the rifle and, and blast it, so I'll get the, the extra successes on that one. All right, I'll give it to you. Uh, go ahead and roll me, what is it, nine challenge dice. Yeah. All right. And does that basically translate to one more momentum? Uh, yes, it does. So you're back up to two total. <clears throat> All right, so with nine total damage, uh, what happens is you do that sort of Kirk roll and you shoulder the butt of the rifle and you fire and you hit the, the Vulcan center mass and he goes down hard. Like he almost, like he was coming up towards you like a zombie might and then he just stumbles forward and falls flat on his face. So for all intents and purposes, uh, this Vulcan is dead again, question mark? See if the stun setting can, you know, disrupt whatever's happening neurologically, but fine, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. All right. So at this point, it passes back to the Vulcans. Uh, Mr. Rast, how would you feel about a Vulcan trying to get at your head? Sorry, um, Jim, oh, yes. can I just ask a quick question before sure. we... Um, I've got a talent here, um, quick to action, that lets us retain the... Uh, retain the uh, Retain the initiative, yes. Initiative for free. Yeah, so in that case, actually, instead of the Vulcan going, uh, one of you all can act in his stead. Uh, I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, Be better than me. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. Matic will charge uh, the pulse rifle. Okay. And he will also set it to kill. So just so you know, kill does know, give me I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Right. I, I give you enough threads as it is. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what are you doing with the charge? Are you giving it vicious? Um, are you giving it piercing? Are you giving it area so it hit both of them? Uh. Uh. Da -da -da -da, with me close range. Let me do piercing. Piercing, okay. On the uh, and I'll I'll shoot the uh, the closest one. That'll be Mr. Blue Dot. Right. Great. So that would be a control security difficulty of three. Security. Uh, spend a momentum for an extra dice. Okay. Da three. Um. Phaser-based weaponry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless you want to determine a uh, termination, that unfortunately, yeah, you too are going to miss initially. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll use the value "no stranger to violence." Okay. And then that should give us back one momentum. Mm -hmm. Now, technically, you're supposed to do the the determination for the two free successes prior to the roll, but I'm gonna let you let it slide for the time being. Um, so for future going on, if you want the two free okay. su two free successes, uh, you got to declare before the roll. About right. That. So yeah. so otherwise, it's just the re rolls, right? It's just the re rolls. Yeah. And let's do okay. that moving forward because I okay. I did not say that and did not catch it. So moving forward, that's that's yeah, what we'll put here too. I should have known. Um, so yeah, Matic, go ahead and roll me uh, nine challenge dice of your own. Or no, you are eight I'll challenge do eight. die. <sighs> Seven successes so... is enough <laughs> that with a uh, blast of energy, uh, you have the option of either uh, disintegrating half the Vulcan or all of the Vulcan. Which would you prefer? <laughs> All of it. All of it. So Mr. Blue Dot is otherwise Thanos as your phaser rifle eviscerates and just disintegrates him utterly. At least we got um, his ID. 
-hmm. by <laughs> by using uh charge and setting it to kill does that affect the number of shots i now have with my rifle yes it does in fact you have used up two of your five shots gotcha and now it is the Vulcan's turn. And uh, we're going to actually have Mr. Red Dot, the friend of Mr. Blue Dot, who just got, you know, disintegrated. He was two days away from retirement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Rast, how would you feel about a uh, Vulcan corpse coming at you and, you know, otherwise? Uh, he's he's uh, definitely uh, assuming a uh, martial combat stance to... Uh, defend himself against it. All right. You are going to roll a daring security at a difficulty of one, and it is opposed against the Vulcan. You are going to need at least three successes here to not be hit by this Vulcan. So daring and what? Daring and security. Okay. Got right. momentum. And we're going to spend one momentum. Okay. Here, let me get rid of this one that for some reason is sitting on me. There. And then hand to hand focus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, only two successes. Are you going to determination that or are you going to let it stand? Uh, you know, we're just going <laughs> to. Yeah. You know, everybody's using determination. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. What value are you tapping? Uh, we're doing uh, doesn't believe in a no win scenario. I'll let it happen. So you can re roll those two zeros. All right. How do I re-roll? Uh, you just go through and just re-roll it again. Uh, unfortunately, oh, okay. there is no like re-roll button, unfortunately. Okay. And just say two dice? Mm -hmm. Just roll two dice this time? Okay. Very nice. Uh, so you nice. get two momentum from that. And yeah, nice. uh, you are able... Now, let me ask this. Would you be defending yourself with your fists or with your knife? Uh, with uh, Basically, he's doing a straight hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it's uh, hands and feet okay. type scenario right now. Then you are going to roll me five challenge dice. Four enough. So you, uh, you perhaps... I'll let you flavor it once I describe what happens, but you are able to hit him, but it's not hard enough for him to go down. All right. So as the uh, red dot <laughs> is running towards Rast, mm -hmm. he um, does a roundhouse kick to its face and it like stutters to the side and continues coming forward. Very nice. All right. Uh, up next is either Rast again or LL. We'll go LL. Okay. Is it my action? It is your action. Okay, so did she knock the Vulcan on their feet? Yes, they are currently on their ass. So is she, as a little aside, like she'd mm -hmm. li I'd like to have her keep her medical tricorder going. Okay. Uh, as this reanimation is happening. Mm-hmm. Um which may give her a disadvantage, I assume. But she is going to reach for her phaser. Okay. As they're on their ass and mm. fire. All right. So this is going to be a control and a security. And okay. what I would say is that keeping your medical tricorder open will take your minor because otherwise, with the minor action, <laughs> you could have charged your phaser. But because you're keeping the tricorder out, that's your minor. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be a control security. And the difficulty here is a three. Okay. I have a forensic science focus. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think that's going to Can I not do that? Time. Okay. I, so nothing then? Yeah, no unfortunately, then? no. She doesn't have any value. Though. What about like the xenobiology? It's uh, xenovirology. Oh, so okay. Technically, it's even more. More specific. Or, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the um, basis of most zombie species that are known as of right now uh, are viral. Are viral based. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen to us fishing. G James yeah. Call. <laughs> I'll let you have it. Why not? You're you're already rolling a very small pool. I'll let it happen. 
three successes. Okay. Very nice. Cool. So you fire your phaser at this thing, and I'd like you to roll me, I believe it is five challenge dice. Four. So you uh, phaser him on the ground, and he takes the hit with a uh, soundless sort of motion as he sort of buckles backwards. Uh, but he's mm -hmm. still moving, unfortunately. Fuck. Okay. And uh, at this point, uh, Williams, I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you still looking at Mr. Orange? I feel like immediately after downing him, um, I would have turned, I guess, in the direction where I think LL is mm -hmm. uh, to to go and help her because I know she's in trouble too. So. All right. So you hear the phaser fire from Alel and you start to maybe move in that direction, but then you feel at the, you know, almost sense at the very last moment that Mr. Orange has risen again and is coming at you with a sort of Kirk two fisted punch. <laughs> the ax handle. Uh huh. <laughs> so oh, do we have to decapitate or maybe. vaporize? Uh, so I would say, Williams, you need to roll me three successes on a daring security here. All right. Daring security. I can do it. I can, I can try that. All right. Uh, How is it that all three of your melee rolls have had at least one crit? I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> um, all right. So let's do daring and security. Uh, I'm going to spend a momentum to get an extra die. Okay. focuses <laughs> two successes so what happens is uh the vulcan is going to hit you however the strength of the blow isn't enough to even damage your suit so you effectively take a zero damage as the vulcan just kind of goes eh. <laughs> but that uh, is uh everyone's turn except mr rast so commander rast what would you like to do for your turn uh, Rast is going to do a forward thrust kick into this uh, into this man and see if I can toss him a ways back. Very good. So you're going to be rolling a daring security, and uh, the number of successes you get will be compared to the Vulcans. Uh, the good news is that you only need to roll three successes here. <laughs> Man, I have, you're right, Matic. I'm looking at the rolls. I have rolled a crit every single time for the Vulcans. And it's been like a, it's been like two threes and a one or something like Vulcans that. Vulcans are really strong. Oh, no. Okay, Ooh. so. Okay, so here's what happens, oh, Rast. Uh, Rast. As the, oh. as you go for this kick, the Vulcan seems to almost anticipate your movement, and not only does so in such a way that he kind of catches you midair and slams you to the ground, but I'm going to spend some threat to reroll some of that damage. So what is that? Uh, let's go for broke here. Okay, so that as he slams you to the ground, uh, you take three stress damage. And in the process, your faceplate cracks. Doesn't break, it cracks. Damn. All right. And is there, it's that minus one from the EV suit? I included that, yeah. Okay. Yeesh. All right. So that is the first round of combat. We now move to the second round because a player just went. It's the Vulcan's turn. And uh, I'm going to say that I feel like picking on Alel. So Alel, uh, the purple dotted Vulcan is going to come at you again with a sort of zombie like shambling. So let's see what he's rolling. All right, I've only rolled one success this time. <laughs> okay, is it like no crits? Is it like twenty one days later zombie, or is it like? Uh, no, yeah, twenty one days. Definitely not twenty. What is it? Twenty one weeks. Why? Twenty. It's twenty eight days. Twenty eight days. Yeah, twenty eight days. What, say, what the fuck know, ever? Yeah, minus yeah, a week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Plus minus a week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, Lel, you're doing a daring security. I only need to see <sighs> one success here. Okay. Just the one. I'm on a low. I believe. I believe I could fly. What is it again? Daring, uh, daring security. <laughs> you should have believed you could fly when you were flying the, the runway. <laughs> 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 All right. 
One success is all you oh. need. So if you would like, you can perform a counterattack. I would like to <laughs> choke slam. Choke slam. All right, you're going to roll me three challenge dice, please. Wait, I didn't say what I wanted to do. Well, we'll we'll flavor based on how much damage you roll. Fine. That's <laughs> I like how that is because then I don't over exaggerate shit. Mm-hmm. 3? Three? 3. There you go. You have done 1 point of damage to this thing, so flavor as you wish. Um front kick. Front kick. I mean, she already did damage to it previously with her phaser, right? Yeah. So actually, because you've rolled two effects, I'm going to add on to that. So you give it a good like front kick and mm-hmm. you knock it down again. This is like a comedy of errors. It gets up, you hit it, it gets knocked down, it gets back up again. You know, Chupa thingy plays. Down. At any <laughs> point, can I contact <laughs> my counterpart? At any point. You can as a free action. Beep, beep. Commander. Hello, where are you? I've got a zombie here. <laughs> yeah, mine's back up. Uh, set uh, set your phasers to maximum. <clears throat> All right. And it is now the player's turn again, so any of you four can act. Uh, Matic will go. Um, okay. He will run up, and um, how easily accepts- accessible is a uh, Ras blade? Mm. like where this is going i don't know rest how accessible uh, is your just, blade it's it's um it's at his side i'd say it's fairly accessible uh matic will run up pull the blade uh from rest's pocket and go for the uh vulcan's neck, or neck? try to go for the vulcan okay so this will be a daring security i am taking threat because it's a lethal attack and it will be opposed by the Vulcan. You need to roll at least two successes here. Dang. Dirty. Uh, let me spend a momentum if y'all don't want. <coughs> Go ahead. We're not really doing that, so <laughs> Uh, see what i can bullshit no power systems is not going to apply here <laughs> um, use, use temporal uh, mechanics and take us back in time to before we landed on this hell no i got nothing actually <laughs> all right fuck it Ooh. so what happens is uh, matic you go in with the knife and as the uh the vulcan uh, actually, in a comedy of errors, slams you to the ground as well. Uh, I'm going to spend threat to reroll. What is that? One die. Okay, so this is this is important because this is enough. He slams you to the ground, and your faceplate cracks too, but yours is more egregious. In fact, if nothing is done in two rounds, your faceplate will, of its own volition, explode outwards. There's no, like, safety shield or anything with these things? Not on an EV <clears throat> suit. <laughs> um, how is Matic and the Vulcan kind of set up? Um, I would say that uh, Rast is on one side of the Vulcan. You are on the other. You are also knocked down. And I forgot, you also take four damage. You were lucky because it was one damage less than it would have taken to injure you. Okay. But yeah, Matic, that is uh, your turn. And uh, I'm going to ramp up the threat here by making Red Dot, the one who just choke slammed you. I'm going to have him go again. <laughs> and he's going to see you on the ground, Matic, and he's going to lean down and start pummeling at your faceplate. Oh! Boy, oh boy. A little ground to pound. Mm hmm. So, Matic, I need to see two successes on a daring security. Otherwise, you are getting punched. Use that, use that momentum. Yeah, yeah use punch. that one. Big time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck. Just use it all. That was all. That, yeah, that's the rest of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, fuck. GM's still sitting on 7 million threat. Yeah. 30. That's one momentum. That's two. 
I'll give you uh, five threats to have five dice. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's great because it's not you. That's Welcome to Bad Exchange Show. It's not you that's going to pay that price. It's Alel. Oh, 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 me. So, God. <laughs> Matic, go ahead and roll your melee damage, which is five challenge dice. But I'm there is so a complication glad here. Off in space right now. Um, <laughs> uh, am I still able to use the knife? Yes. Okay. So it is vicious one, which means every effect you roll counts double. Okay. And that's still the five? Still the five. find what the fuck I'm looking for. Uh, 10 challenge dice. Uh, yeah, not only do you cause an injury, but you've also gotten rid of all of his stress. So you triple kill this thing. How would you like to describe it? Um, whenever he slams back to the ground, gets on top, uh, Mad whenever he goes to punch Matic, uh, Rast, Rast will look over and see Matic has, a sm has somewhat of a smile on his face. Uh, whenever the Vulcan goes to punch uh, Medic's face, he'll kind of wrap his legs around the Vulcan's waist, turn turn to where the punch hits the ground next to him. And then uh, you'll see the dagger kind of go into the side of his neck. And then you just pure grunting as Matic kind of beheads the Vulcan. Okay, which is extra impressive because he's in an AV suit. But yeah, with that knife, you just go... Head comes off, green blood sprays everywhere. Um, however, Matic, with that complication, <laughs> your faceplate shatters. Which means you are going to take an immediate three stress damage as you begin to suffocate and freeze to death. And uh, since it is now the uh, zombie's turn, the v uh, Vulcan zombie's turn... Alel, I was not kidding when I said you were going to be the one to pay for this because from the darkness behind you, it's like someone taps you on your shoulder. And yet another deceased Vulcan. Oh, boy. I did have to spend threat to do it, but another Vulcan taps you on the shoulder. <laughs> Medic just gave you five, man. What are you going to do? The, uh, the good news is as long as you roll at least one success, you can successfully melee attack it in return. But there's another one. There is another one, yes. What's that one doing? Uh, it that, just fell. That one is still on the ground. So you've got one Can I use a free you. action to let Williams know I have another one? You certainly may. I do that. I'm um, on my way. I'm going to roll, I guess. All right. Another daring security. And something I should say is that usually when even you guys kind of see what combat's like now, it's very, you know, very quick once we get the hang of it. Um, usually I also sometimes do a three and done rule, uh, depending on where we are in the session. So for this combat, we will do a three rounds and then we'll find a way to narratively wrap it up kind of a thing. Um, so with one success, you do manage to uh, melee attack the one that has snuck up on you. Go ahead and roll me three challenge dice. Five is enough to knock him down nice. as well. Nice. Um, no one. Just going to punch him right in the face. All right. Well, the good news is since his faceplate is shattered, you get right up into his nose. In fact, you hear the sickening crunch as his no nose both breaks and dislocates <laughs> the same thing. And he goes down. Not out, but he is down. And it is now the player's turn again. Williams, Rast, or Alel? Um... I will. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to smoke the one that I am fighting. So I'm going to try to shoot it with my phaser rifle mm -hmm. uh, set to kill. Set to kill? Get more threat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Now, are you charging your phaser in any way? Because um, charging it does give you additional effects, but it also does take uh, an additional shot. Additional shot, yeah. Um, you know what? I am going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Would you like it to be piercing so it would get through resistance, or would you like it to be vicious so that uh, effects count double? Uh, I will... Let's make it piercing. Okay. And 
assume that's control plus security at a difficulty of three. Correct. Uh, no momentum to speak of. Could give me threat. Right. Uh, no, we're good. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give you a point of threat to get an extra die. All righty. Supplies. Look at that. You get a momentum. Very nice. And yeah, go ahead and roll me uh, nine, nine challenge die. Nine challenge dice. Nine. So that is four with a piercing of eight. So you're going to get through his resistance, but uh, four is not enough to kill it. Uh, you could spend the momentum you just got to reroll those five zeros, though. I will do just that. Okay. And let's Spy momentum. Five. That is enough. With the extra four damage, you too uh, disintegrate it. And I'll let you flavor it if you so wish. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be that standard Star Trek. He's going to get hit with the thing and just sort of from center mass out, he's going to be reduced to just a skeleton. Very nice. And uh, just turn to ash. Um, and the then if I can, I'm going <laughs> to... It gets up and starts coming. No, uh, then I'm going to try, if I can, uh, to begin to, to make my way over to to allow ll okay uh, i would say that if you give me two more threat you will be able to not only find ll but you will be able to see both of her attackers he's just gonna make more attackers <laughs> <laughs> if we do that all right i'm gonna pull i'm gonna pull my away team here so i know it's a no from medic uh, um is there a flare can I use a flare? Can uh, he use a flare? I would say you could use a flare, but it would be subject to the same sort of two meter restriction. Um, I don't even know how know far I walk. I mean, heck, <laughs> heck it. Let's just go. I'll give you your threat and I'll end up there. And if we are doing like three and done, I think I've got a way to narratively wrap this up with a nice little bow. Okay. All right, so uh, good news, Alal. Uh, as it's either your turn or Rast's turn, uh, Alal, you do see that Commander Williams has emerged from the darkness. Uh, Rast, you have a different problem. You have a faceplateless uh, Mr. Matic who is yep. beginning to suffocate and freeze. Uh, Rast is going to take his knife, mm -hmm. slice the uh, slice the arm on the EV suit for the Vulcan, mm -hmm. and like pull it down over Matic's face. Oh, so kind of forming like a hood of some sort. Correct. I just um, picture you smothering Matic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me see. <laughs> Let's have Rast roll a daring and engineering. Okay. And I will make this with threat a difficulty of two. Can Matic try to assist, or am I just out for the count, basically? Uh, you are not out for the count, but you cannot assist a hood being thrown over your head. <laughs> okay. Uh... We also have these a beacon, like these transporter enhancers. You do. Mm -hmm. They just have not been set up. What? Uh, 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 yeah, so with I... IKEA pylon things that we have to set up. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll give you a threat. Uh, I'll give you a threat. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to argue that hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat focus. I'll give it to you, sure. <laughs> we can just say that he's, like, panicking and trying to oh slap your hands away. God. Fantastic. Oh! <laughs> Not a single one. Okay, oh. so we, we have two options here. Either you can just <laughs> fail outright, or what we can do here is you can spend your determination again. Now... With determination, you get one point a session. There are ways to get more of it. Is he going to challenge a value? Yes. And if you would like, you could challenge a value. Now, what challenging a value does is it gives you a point of determination back. However, you must cross out that value. And at the end of the session, you must replace it with a new one. So it's usually <laughs> something that you would say, like, uh, doesn't believe in a no-win scenario. You mm -hmm. might cross that out and change it to... Victory is preferable, or uh, a no-win scenario is an ideal, but it isn't. It's it's a change of value, if if I'm making any sense. Okay, so no, did, it makes sense. I think I've got a suggestion. Just cross out. I don't believe in a no-win scenario and replace it with fucking Matic. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'd be able to apply that value, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
cast uh, a wide net. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we're, we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So you uh, get and your we determination. will do the doesn't believe in the no-win scenario. All right, you may re-roll as many of those dice as you wish. Uh, that would be all of them, probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's daring engineering with... And a focus. And da, 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 da. Oh! <laughs> because you spent your determination to reroll, I'm going to let it succeed at cost, but that means I get four threat. Um, right. How many who's, threat? who's counting? Who's counting anymore? Like, just. It's a, lot of, <laughs> it's a lot. So, Matic, good news, bad news. Good news. Rast has managed to basically throw a hood over you, and you are no longer suffocating. Bad news. You cannot see out of your suit. It is just a wall of fabric. I'd poke your air hole. I'd poke your eye holes, but it would take it. It would uh, get rid of the whole advantage. Mm -hmm. And I would say um, that as long as you do not take a single point of damage, this fix will hold. But the moment you take even a single point, that uh, that the jury rig fix will rupture. Great. Um. Mag just kind of gives a thumbs up while he catches his breath. <laughs> just, he's got this one over He's okay. <laughs> All right. So, Alel, before we move on to round number three, what would you uh -huh. like to do? Um. So, I have Williams with me now, right? You do. All right. Uh, so, she's going to... Try and step on the face of the one on the ground in front of her, in Mr. Of Purple. Mr. Purple. All righty. So that's going to be a daring security from you. You would need three successes to hit him. Okay. And the bad news is, is that uh, if you don't hit him, he's going to hit you for enough damage to do the very same thing that happened to Matic. Oh, this is... <laughs> God. And plus side, she goes down. She's in a line of fire. <laughs> Silver linings. Oh, unfortunately, two successes is not enough. So, Alel, you bring your foot down to try to curb stomp this guy. Yeah. And in a feat of agility <laughs> that you, would, you were definitely not expecting, he not only rolls out of the way... But he brings his uh, foot up to kick you in the faceplate. And you are going to take five stress damage. Your faceplate is going to shatter. Jeez. And you are considered injured, which means that effectively you are out of this combat. <coughs> but this does matter for Williams because, uh, Williams, if you don't do anything on your turn, she's going to have problems. So we'll just give you that icon for now. And yeah, uh, the good news, though, is that, well, not really good news, I should say. The, <laughs> the good news is that the Vulcans uh, have to spend threat to further attack Alel, um, which I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to spend threat, so the very same oh. Vulcan that just kicked you is actually going to uh, bring his hands up. And start to put the fingers on the pressure points that would be common for a mind meld. And I need you to now roll me a... What is this? This is a presence and command. And the difficulty here is a three. All right, so unfortunately, you fail this, so immediately you begin to mind meld with the Vulcan. And mm -hmm. this is actually going to end combat, because as you mind meld with the Vulcan, you're not sensing a Vulcan on the other end. You're sensing an alien life form on the other end. And before we go to break, the alien life form says, what are you? And that's where we're going to take our break. So... Uh, be back in about, uh, let's say, just be back at the top of the hour, everybody. All righty. Okay.
right, welcome back, everybody. And uh, apparently, we have uh, quite the viewership today. So, hi, Twitch. How you doing, Twitch? Hope you're having a good time. Uh, my players are, that's for sure. Uh, so, where we last left off, the uh, deceased Vulcans that the away team had come across on a planet that was uh, naturally dark due to a uh, silicate atmosphere. Um, the Doctor, a Denobulan named Lieutenant Allel, had just been mind melded with an alien consciousness, and that's where we're going to pick up. So, narrative time, this happens almost instantly for Allel. Um, the, to Williams, who might be already trying to scramble to do something about the faceplate shattering, or maybe even to pull the Vulcan off of Allel. Um, this is this is all happening almost momentarily with Alelv's mind. Uh, but to repeat, the alien presence uh, that is sort of behind the Vulcan, so it's, it's kind of using the Vulcan as a conduit. Uh, the alien presence says, what are you? Am I to answer in my mind? You may answer, yeah. You may answer back. You, you are able to freely communicate with this presence. I am a Denobulan. What is a Denobulan? We are a race of people. You mean intelligent life? Yes. You are not like us. You're not intelligent? You are not <laughs> like us. Where are you? I am everywhere. Are you in the air? Yes. How did you get here? My ship, it crash landed. Is it the ship in the crater? Yes. Are you stuck here? We are terraforming this planet so that we may survive. Do you want us to leave? Do you need to leave? I think our biology is incompatible with your terraforming methods. You are different. Yes. Doesn't say anything else. We mean you no harm. That is not our intention either. How did our, how did the others die? Others? You are the only life form we are aware of. Well, now aware of. So how are you? You are speaking to me through my mind via another organic life form. The conduit. The conduit is a life form? Yes, a dead life form. That is regrettable. I would say it is a regrettable as well. If you let us go, we will leave you alone. And almost like you rush back to yourself and you find yourself back in the moment, uh, suffocating and freezing to death as mm -hmm. the Vulcan cadaver pulls the hand away from your, uh, from your face Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let Williams, if you want to, you know, jump in, this would be your time to do so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I can, I mean, is there a way that I can seal her helmet? Uh, there's several ways. Uh, you okay. could use the Rast method of uh, <laughs> cutting off bits of a uh, EV, uh, an EV suit and just sort of forming a hood. Um, you could go into Alel's medical kit and pull out basically a injury sealing foam, but it would work in this case. You would basically foam up the front of her faceplate, and it, it wouldn't be visible through the faceplate, uh, but it would be sealed at least. Uh, you know, let's go with uh, option number two, the uh, shaving cream. Okay, I'd like you to roll me a daring and medicine, please. Difficulty of... Let's make it a difficulty four because I've got I, threat. Why not? Oh, okay. That's yeah. Spend that threat. <laughs> Why spend not? it. Uh, all right. Daring <laughs> medicine. You said give Daring her a one twenty. Uh, does my survival focus apply here? It definitely would. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you threat to get an extra die. Okay. <laughs> I love how John is just like, no, damn you, no. <laughs> All right, yeah. two successes. Uh, I'm going to say you have an option of succeeding here. However, the complication is that you seal it up so well that the only way LL is getting out of this EV suit is if someone cuts her out of it. Not let's really. do it. Yeah, let's do it. Full permission. That's fucking badass. All right. So you take the spray foam and go across her faceplate, and it seals up almost instantaneously. And Alel, you begin to go, <gasps> as you can finally, as the suit reestablish atmosphere, and you can finally breathe again. And yeah, we are out of combat. You can speak freely with yourselves. Yeah. Take it away. Lieutenant, you all right? Is, is her brain like goo from that? Uh, you're a little frazzled. Uh, so she kind of, like, doesn't answer you right away and tries to get her bearings and, like, yeah, just kind of feels around. So she doesn't just answer kidding. you right away. But she looks like she's cognizant somewhat. Cool. Uh, well, if that's the case, I'm going to sort of take her by the, the elbow and try to get her on her feet. Sure. She gets up. Right. Now I'll just, I uh, will do the... We'll do the fourth grade method, and I'll just lead her by the hand back towards the runabout. Okay. Are, are we going to talk to the others? Um, sure. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah. Uh, Williams to Rast and Matic. We're here. Am I able to talk with the hood on or no? Yeah, you can talk with the hood on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and and sorry, GM. What's happening with the Vulcans? Uh they're just sort of standing there, just chilling. <laughs> but uh, actually, I'm going to spend some threat. The two that were with you, they're, they're just sort of walking behind you. You know, they're not really being aggressive. They're just sort of you know walking behind you. Curious. That's yeah. so cute. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say. Seems like, for whatever reason, hostilities here are over. We've still got two until recently enemy contact with us, but they seem to be taking no hostile action and just observing. LL will like kind of speak up and say, they crash landed here. They're what's in the air. Uh, they don't want to hurt us if we don't hurt them. They, um... didn't, they didn't know we were here before. Maddox's gonna feel around him for the head of the Vulcan he took off. Okay. Um, he's gonna pick it up and just kind of feel, and he's gonna try to like see if it's dead, dead. I mean, I don't know how much tactile sensation you would have through an EV suit, but you're just like, yeah, this is a head. This, this, this is a head. I mean, as long as it doesn't bite him or anything, like I'm assuming. Uh, he's I gonna spend assume three fet. It bites your finger. <laughs> Doesn't do any damage. It just bites your finger. Yes, um, get rid I hum of the threat. it. I uh, hum the head, and I'm like, "Yeah, we're handled over here too." <laughs> All right, we're we're making our way back to you, um, Lieutenant LL. While well, her face shield's broken, and uh, I've patched the problem, but she's not going to be able to get out of this EV suit on her own. We we had a similar issue. Uh, at that point, Maddox kind of look will look in the general direction of where he think Rast is at. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm assuming I'm hoping Maddox looks in the complete wrong way. Uh, <laughs> Rast, your face mask got cracked. Are you having any integrity issues with your suit? Um, check it real quick. I would say, uh, for the sake of momentum, go ahead and roll me a uh, insight in engineering, a difficulty of zero. Oh, thank God. <laughs> can, I, can I tell him how to check his suit really well so that way I can watch assist him, in the roll? Watch him roll complications. I would say <laughs> if you assist him, Matic, you could assist him, but I would make the complication range bigger. Hey, you're spending threat. Fuck it. I think we're good. <laughs> And um, <laughs> all right, what was it? Okay, no, that wouldn't fit. Even though I'm like checking out my helmet, 
Helm operation? No. <laughs> oh. It was oh. worth a shot. <laughs> no. Hey, one success. That's one momentum. So yes, uh, the good news is that as long as you don't take another uh, massive blow to the faceplate, you're fine. <laughs> All right. No, it, it seems to be fine. Let's see if we can get this door open and possibly get you uh, a helmet. Yeah, so let's... Uh, um, from... And uh, Rask kind of waves his face and uh, his hand in front of Maddox. Uh, From what Maddox can remember of how the building looked Mm -hmm. um would structural integrity of the building be compromised at all um partially but it's conceivable that the atmosphere uh in some places yes but the way the prefab is built uh you would know just because you're the chief engineer you know these things um, you know that the prefab is modulated, so maybe one of the modules is completely exposed to atmosphere, but the other three should be completely fine. But okay. I will remind you, there is no power currently to this thing. And for sake of argument, to get you guys all on the same page, um, as you are fumbling around, uh, Williams and Alel, uh, you all find the uh, same beginnings of the outpost as the rest. Now, how you get from point A to point B, I leave to the rest of you. By um, the grace of God. <clears throat> Once they say that they've arrived, I tell them just <laughs> simply follow the road. It'll bend to the west. If you see a head, kick it. Kick the head. Got it. Like a soccer ball. Don't kick or the sport. baby. <laughs> um... Rest. I suggest we get in there and see if we can find me. Find me and the little uh, replacement suits. I agree. Let's see. Uh, we'll wait. Uh, they're almost here, so let's wait for uh, Mr. Williams. And am I Ms. lagging behind? No, I'm. 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 I'm I'll just. Well, yeah. And sure enough, the two Vulcans, as I said, are just kind of following behind you. <laughs> Rast looks for a moment, sees that Matic. It, it, can't see, so he's not panicked about the fact that there's Wilkins walking behind him. <laughs> Otherwise, Maddox would be like shooting stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, we made friends with ours. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Maddox made friends in his own way. Uh, I don't know if friends is the right word, but at least they're not enemies. They seem pretty neutral. I am going to attempt to open the door. All right. Roll me a fitness and engineering, please. Difficulty of zero. Um, can I help him with that? You may certainly assist him. All right. I'm going to persuade the door to open. <laughs> sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Boy, uh, Maddox and Williams just here rest. Okay, baby, you just got to open for me this one time. <laughs> oh, my God, phrasing. All right, so uh, two successes. So uh, you get uh, three total momentum. And, yeah, you are able to open it up. And I'm going to say that, for sake of argument, you lucked out that you've opened up part of the airlock. Um, now, whether or not there's atmosphere on the other side of this airlock, you don't know. Um, but if you were to close the door and seal it, and then open up the other side of the airlock, you would find out very quickly. Um, or uh, make it so. All right. So we'll say that Rast and Williams, you go ahead and uh, you cycle through the airlock. And sure enough, you luck out. There is a class M atmosphere, meaning breathable atmosphere on the other side. And now that you're able to kind of see, uh, I'm actually going to increase your vision range here just so you can see the entire prefab. So I think if I did that to Rast, yeah, it should show up for everybody. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's as far as you're seeing. It is a one, two, three, four, five. It's about a six or seven meter by seven meter cube. And the good news, well, good news in two aspects. Uh, Not only are you seeing spare EV suits, you're also seeing a working console. Now, when I say working, it's like sputtering. So it's like flickering in and out. Um, well, 
do you want to go look at the console, um, Commander Williams, and I'll get Maddox and then LL taken care of as quickly as possible. Yeah, you're gonna need to cut LL out of her suit. She's, yeah, she's I'll get it. I'll get Maddox out for Maddox out first, and then uh, we'll take care of LL. <laughs> Sounds good. So the Falcons I'll... just like creep in. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I, shut, yeah. I shut the door on him. <laughs> all right, so let's say that you're all in the prefab now. Yeah, I'll take a look at the console while he's handling Maddox and LL. Okay. So, uh, as you look at the console, you see that there are a series of personal logs. And, as I said, uh, off-screen, uh, <clears throat> you may, if you wish to have extra momentum, one of you may choose to read out uh, these logs. But for the sake of the stream, I am going to put it up so that everybody can see it. I'll and read one I will of them. give you two momentum to read this out. The whole thing? The whole thing. Well, I would say you could pick and choose if you really wanted to, because some of it's just dry fluff. Um, it's mostly just, for the sake of argument, what do you pull from this log? Okay. I mean, I can just run through it. Go for it. Do okay. it. Okay. Oh, this has happened a while ago. Remember your, your Vulcans. Uh, okay. Start date, 87197.4. <laughs> Establishing base camp, we have deduced the planet's semi-major axis as 0.0356 AU, orbital eccentricity of 0.018, orbital period of 2.4 blah, 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 days, a rotational period of 6.215 hours, or 6.125 hours, and an orbital inclination of 83. The day-night period will take some adjustment. Stardate 8728.1. This morning, several unidentified objects fell and impacted the surface of the planet, producing substantial shock waves, which has impaired some of our equipment, most notably sensors. While first thought of as large meteorites, scans detect life signs. And as such, an exploratory team has been selected to investigate the phenomena. The nearest impact site is the day's travel by desert flyer. I have not been selected. Stardate 87249.9. We have not heard from the team today. We will attempt to reestablish communications by transmitting every three hours with the standard call and response procedure. Stardate 87250.5. A storm has begun to move in on our position, an intensely thick black storm. The sensors are measuring sudden electrostatic discharges from its strange composition. This weather was not detected in orbit by initial surveys, so I must continue to try and gain tele telemetry. Though, as noted in my previous log, the sensor equipment has been, has been functioning at 37.51% efficiency since the impacts. Stardate 87255.1. The atmospheric phenomenon is all around us now, having entirely replaced the composition of the class H atmosphere of the planet previously. No contact has been made with the exploratory team, and I'm uncertain our communications have been penetrating the atmospheric phenomenon. We have decided to activate a distress call to alert Starfleet to our situation. Expedition Log Supplemental. We are under attack from an unknown alien species. They have inflicted breaches to the structure of the buildings and main power is offline. Environmental controls are failing. I have ordered Galar to prepare the EV suits. There's an alien scream in the background, as well as standard fire, as well as sounds of an EV suit pressurizing. This log will be our last here. We will. There's an incredibly uncomfortable pause. And the muffled sounds of crunches and alien screams before the computer closes the log. End log. Mm -hmm. And that's all of you get that. So are we, am I changed? Yeah, at this point you would have changed. Okay. So she's kind of like <laughs> finished reading up and Alel's like, well, it doesn't sound like, they told me that they were in the atmosphere and I assume that they were using the Vulcans as a conduit. And I asked them how they died, but they didn't understand that they were living in the first place. They said that we were the first intelligent creatures they've come across. She seems puzzled. And there are still gouges and gashes on the uh, structure that doesn't uh, that doesn't mix with 
Vulcans being able to cause that type of damage. And the logs maybe there, mentioned maybe there is something else here. The logs mentioned something attacking them. Exactly. And whatever was shrieking in the background of that last log was no atmospheric disturbance. Can we ask one of these dead Vulcans? I mean, LL, you seem to communicate with them somehow. They communicated via mind meld, and I don't want to do that again. If rest. necessary, I will. If we need somebody to mind meld with them, I need uh, I need you as sharp as possible for the potential of uh, the engineering to get the ship back off the ground. I will uh, I will go and try to communicate. All right. Um, Matic will try. Will go over to the console that's still somewhat powered, and he's going to try to get sensors back up. Okay. Maybe we should try to also reestablish communication with the ship. I would say that if you give me two momentum, I will not only allow you to reinstate power, but also gain communication back to the Fenrir. We just cut those two momentum. Group decision. I mean, I say do it. Having this place Spend power. I mean, would, money. The person would, who would, can roll this the best does would, this. Would power would be mean the... life support? Yes. So wait, is this an automatic thing or a I still need to roll? No, just give me two momentum and it'll happen. Can if we give I you two momentum and it. have him roll? Uh, Yeah, I would have him roll a, uh, let's call it a control engineering at a difficulty of three. It's three because you're still in your EV suit, so it would be an increased difficulty because of that. Okay. So is that spend two and roll or choose spend not two to and roll? roll. Oof. Well, if we're going to spend two and roll, we might as well just spend two and not roll when it's a difficulty three. Yeah. I'm basically trying to throw you a bone since, you know, I yep. don't want to spend 26 threat at you. Oh, God. Ah. Uh. Yeah, let's just take it. Let's just yeah. Let's take the life preserver. Okay. So yeah, we will we will take what's behind curtain number two, Bob. And it turns out it's the donkey. It's uh, I forget the name of that uh, that problem. Is it the Monty Hall problem? Doesn't matter. It's uh, beside the point. Yeah, you are able to not only reestablish life support but uh, communication with the Fenrir. And I'm gonna say that uh, Captain Archuleta, you have been trying to reach the away team for quite a while. This is Archuleta to the away team. Do you read me? Matic here, Captain. How can we help you? Oh, good. I'm glad you didn't hang, just hang up on me again. <laughs> what? I'm not shepherd with the council. Uh, report on your status, Commander. Uh, we're alive. <laughs> Rast will go over. <laughs> you, you say that Captain as if Sir, that's something to be proud we have, of? We have reestablished uh, power at the outpost. Uh, we have encountered several Vulcans. Unfortunately, they are no longer among the living. Um, we had a few issues and potentially a first contact scenario. Um, <laughs> we'll fill you in as we get more information. Is everyone safe everyone uh, everyone is still functioning currently all right uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna chime in at this point and say uh captain this is williams lieutenant ll has been injured not critically uh, but uh, please have sick base standing by when we get back very well keep me updated uh, any new developments on your end, Captain? I don't think there has been. Nope. Has there? Nothing you? going on? No. Uh, oh, Jensen did call. Jensen did report to sickbay, so there's that. But, you know, it's Jensen. Um, I probably would have had the doctor put, put him under standard just man flu, and then the, <laughs> man the flu. cure is uh, a couple hours rest after a hypo spray of sugar water. Okay. 
I only bring it up because we started the session with Jensen, so of course we it's have to throw it. Jensen condition. Jensen it sounds like a clown. <laughs> so it's fun to say, but not when you're trying to be serious. <laughs> um, nothing, no new uh, developments here in orbit. Don't wait, team. Take care of yourselves and check in. Understood. And with that, Rast is going to make sure everybody's fully locked into their EV suits. And he is going to step outside. Well, I think if I understand correctly, since this is an airlock, we can... Well, you I mean, can cycle I'm definitely... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Could we try to bring one of the Vulcans in? That way we you could remove your helmet and not suffocate? I'm going to ask them. Okay. So Rast, you uh, you step outside. Yep. And uh, are you just going to verbally say, "Hey, we need one of you to come inside," something like that? Uh, he is he is going to step uh, step forward and uh, say, "Can you communicate uh, verbally?" The Vulcans <laughs> remain motionless. Um. Uh, I motion one of them to come forward. Uh, one of them does step forward, but otherwise the eyes are lifeless. There's, there doesn't really seem to be an intelligence behind them. So it might have just been a random movement. You're not really sure. Okay. Um, I I take I, I reach down for his hand. Okay. And I'll take it. Do I know if it would work through the EV suit? Um, if I remember Voyager, Tuvok does it at least once. So I would say, yes, you could potentially do the mind meld through your suit to him. All right. So I take his hand and put it on the side of my head. Okay. Or, you, I mean, you could also do the reverse where you initiate the mind meld and you yeah, but... do it. Um, am I able to? Yeah. I mean, his faceplate's broken, so you could just... Oh. You know, reach through and yeah, but Oop, okay, all right. Romulan Romulan kind of way. Yeah, in a Romulan. Yeah, with a Romulan twist. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Alrighty, so this is going to be either a presence and command, or it could also be a control and medicine, whichever you're better at. The yeah. difficulty here is a three. It's going to be presence and command. Okay. Um. And uh, how about Xeno Psychology? Most definitely. Wow. And, and That's fancy. I'm sorry, Dude, but I'm gonna, that is fancy. I'm going to go ahead and spend our momentum. Do it. Ah, <laughs> oh, so close. Uh, complication and no successes. Uh, I'm going to say, since you did get the two successes, this will succeed. Uh, at a cost. However, the complication is that while this is all going on, and I'm going to increase Maddox range so that you can see this as well, uh, while you are mind melding, uh, those of you might notice very large uh, shadows moving in the distance. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as you, uh, as you mind meld, uh, Rast, you contact the same alien presence that Alel felt. And now that you are in direct, well, almost direct contact with it, um, the alien presence is now familiar. The, this is the pressure you've been feeling this entire time. Okay. And the presence says, are you another life form? Yes. How odd. There are so many of you. We have come to we have come to try to help the people that you currently inhabit. I believe you called them the conduit. Yes, we did not know the conduits were living. We simply sensed a power uh, source and tried to harvest said power. Oh, I just sounded odd. You harness power? Yes, we require power to survive. We will get the power drain. 
we will gather what we can here and and be on our way. Um, we came to try to find any survivors. If we do find any, we will take them with us. There are no survivors. <clears throat> Is there any way that we can help you? We wish to know more about you. You are new. Can you can you come inside to our atmosphere? No, your atmosphere is hostile to us. That and is yours. why we have terraformed this planet. <laughs> That's, this is why I asked. Um, well, I, I would I would greatly uh, welcome a discussion with you. We may use this conduit if you so wish. Or you may interface with one of my pods. And is at this point that uh, this big old hunk of flesh just sort of floats into view. And I'll move it so the stream can see what's going on. Uh, this big old hunk of floating flesh just sort of flies into view and just hovers menacingly. Uh, is this you? Yes, this is one of my pods. Uh, let's continue to use this conduit. As you wish. What is it that you are called? We are the Krillian. We are, we are, we are many different things, but I am Romulan and Beta Z. We do not know these things. More than happy to tell you more. There's just silence, but you get the general feeling that they've accepted this. Just don't tell them the coordinates. <laughs> don't tell them the coordinates. Um, and he is going to uh, do his best to uh, reach into his training and uh, follow first contact protocol the best to the best of his ability. Okay. So what you would know uh, in that case is that while you have not botched, but you've made almost successful first contact. And because this mind, this presence, the Krillian, as they're called, has expressed interest in learning more, um, you've basically done all you can do. Um, at this point, this is where actual diplomats, actual like anthropologists come in and, you know, actually do the full first contact. We will, we will do our best to send a representative to speak further with you if you would like someone more trained in meeting with foreign life forms for the first time this would be good we will deliberately tell our pods not to sap the energy of any future landing craft you send i i appreciate that <laughs> um we will we will send you a... Can you receive messages? Hails? Yes. We have used your beacon to monitor all your communications. Then we will send We will send you a message upon our approach. This is acceptable. We must gather a few things so that we can repair our ship. As you uh, mentioned, the energy has been sapped from it. Um, and then we will be on our way, and I will send you a representative. We look forward to meeting with you. And again, they don't say anything, but there's definitely a measure of contentment and uh, agreeableness. Okay. Uh, he's going to get on the communicator and uh, talk back to the group and say, uh, we need to find what we need, and we're going to go ahead and repair the ship and get out of here. Music to my ears. All right. Hi. How long will it take you to get what we need, medic? Uh, assuming that nothing major is wrong with the ship, and I need to replicate anything, probably half an hour to an hour to make sure I have enough components, and then get back to the ship and fix it. All right. Um. 
Uh, um, Commander Williams, why don't you come with me and we just do a one quick sweep of the of the area here just to make sure that our guests are correct in the fact that there is no one hiding, masking themselves or anything of that nature uh, and get any other files that we could potentially get back to the Vulcans. Right behind you, Commander. Okay. All right. And we're the two of us are just going to do a quick sweep of the area. Okay. And as you do, you do see, in fact, I'm just going to turn off global illumination at this point <coughs> uh, so you can see what's going on because you've more or less beaten the encounter. So you do uh, notice that there is uh, not just one, but two of the floating sort of masses of flesh. Um, but they don't seem to mind your presence. They don't really make any moves that would be considered hostile. Um, you do notice that this one to the left, the larger of the two, is currently attacking the prefab to the north. But you notice that it's not trying to destroy the structure. It's just trying to get at the electrical wiring to the structure. Um... Hard points, power cables. I'm going to eject um, the core from my rifle. Okay. And roll it along, uh, roll it be to this side of the creature. Okay. Uh, and as you look do, at him and, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You break it, you bought it, Commander. <laughs> and uh, as, as the power core rolls out, the creature actually almost instantaneously turns and using one of its uh, mandibles slash tentacle things, it uh, picks up the power core, and you can visibly see that the electricity is being drained. The power is being drained out of the core. Right. I figure it's eating. That gives us an opportunity to quickly get into that building mm -hmm. and see what we can find. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, and while we do that, is there any way, GM, that I can perhaps take some tricorder readings of the larger pods to find out what type of matter that they're that they're made of i mean obviously the vulcans are vulcan but mm -hmm. i want to know what these things are made of uh roll me a reason science difficulty of one uh and oh no never mind i'm not gonna reason science i don't have any focuses that would turn i already spent my determination so nope Best you can tell is that they're a silicate-based life form, but beyond that, you got nothing. I wonder if these are the things that the other race if hunts. Are hunts, yeah. Like that's a decent question. That's I was wondering that myself. They seem quite dangerous. There, I think there's a reason they set up close you... to a star. Like, I wonder why they're not using. Yeah the solar power and um, if we're actually if we're actually talking about it i'm gonna sort of harken back to when we were going through the um uh the the ship that belongs to the the Azeth. Azeth. Mm -hmm. um and say i mean did you notice that the battle damage i mean can anybody remember was it near power and junctions were, and maintenance what were boxes? they called what were they called again the Azeth? the Azeth, yeah I'm going. I, uh, I'm going to look at Williams and uh, see if you go in, see what you can find file-wise or anything important. Um, I'm going to speak with the creature again. All right. And Alal first says, "Commander, are you feeling okay?" I, I'm feeling fine. Okay. I'll stand by. Uh, and then he is going to reach out and touch the large creature. Okay, so let me just move some tokens so everybody knows where you're at. All right. So uh, you make physical contact with the creature, and uh, I'm going to say that no role is required for this. You immediately make contact with the mind again. I have a follow-up question. We would be happy to answer. You know of the Azeth. We have not heard of this Azeth before. Are they like you? Um, they are also uh, a silicon-based life form like yourselves. How interesting. Perhaps we would get along. <laughs> have you ever 
encountered a life form that looked like us, but with long, slender bodies um, that did not have separate legs. Trying to describe a tail. Yeah, you're trying to describe a tail. Uh, uh, wouldn't he be able to do like a mental image of like a memory of this is what they look like? Yeah, I would say you could yeah, do that. Then he'll do that. Um, and the mind says, we have never seen such a creature before. No. Huh. Well, you have many things to look forward to when, when we come back and uh, speak more to you uh, with our emissaries. All right. uh, he is going to kind of make small talk. Mm -hmm. basically keep uh, to, it distracted to buy william's time all right and william's yeah, like, where are yeah. you from yeah where are you from where are you come here i'm here often yeah. <laughs> how's the weather yeah. uh williams you actually find something very important you find a barely functioning but still uh the occupant inside is still alive an unconscious vulcan uh yeah i'll immediately um well i'll i'll Move to extricate them immediately and get them back to the uh, to the classroom environment. But as I do, I'll hit my communicator uh, and say, um, "Williams to LL, uh, I've got a live one here." A Vulcan, live Vulcan. I mean. <laughs> uh, so she like. We'll bring us. we'll bring him back to you. Okay. And I'll uh, wait Rast, here. Rast will go help. So yeah, uh, you guys get back inside the environment, and Alel, I'd like you to roll me a Reason Medicine difficulty of one. And this is you scanning the Vulcan that's conscious or unconscious to see if you need to do anything immediately. Um, <laughs> forensic science or xenoimmunology? I'll give it to you. Why not? <laughs> one success is all you need. Uh, good news. Uh, you don't, he's not like in any life threatening scenario. He just is unconscious, probably from stress or lack of proper, uh, oxygen. Uh, so with time, he'll come back around of his own volition. Um, if you really wanted to, you could wake him up with a hypo, but whether or not you do so is your discretion. Uh, okay. So he's not, I say to the commanders, um, He's alive. It seems like he's going to be fine. He just needs to wake up on his own. I recommend in order to not complicate the situation further that we do not uh, bring him, make him come awake. Uh, as much as I would like to hear what he knows, I agree. Sure. Well, <clears throat> then somebody's going to have to help me carry him back to the shuttle. Well enough. And yeah, I think with that, uh, we come to the end of our session. But before we close off, because I find it uh, an interesting way to this session <clears throat> and to give the captain a little bit of leeway, uh, Commander Rast, you have just finished up your report and are delivering it to the captain in her ready room. All right. Um, Rast walks over and hands her the, hands her the pad. Um, the pad is pretty much a minute to minute. Uh, discussion of what what happens during the mission. He doesn't omit anything. Okay. Um, so she reads it, doesn't get very far before she looks up and says, hmm, crashed another shuttle? The, the shuttle is back in our landing bay, Captain. Good. She keeps scrolling through. She says, oh, you initiated first contact. Correct. Well done. <laughs> whether or not she uh, pays attention to the whole fact that Maddox disintegrated. <laughs> so. Wait, what do you mean? Well, the, according to, uh, yeah, so Maddox may or may not have disintegrated one of the uh, first contact beings that was inside of Vulcan. Two, but oh. who's counting? <laughs> and beheaded one. Yeah. Yes. Well, she does... I guess gloss over that because it's Maddox. So. I mean, I got I got one too. If you really want to be technical about it, it's... <laughs> yes. But I didn't know about the one you got. Yeah, true enough. Um, she says, "Does anyone think of talking to them before resorting to violence?" There was a uh, well, 
there was a struggle uh, when it came when it came to me. Um, by the time I had uh, already in, engaged in uh, melee with it, uh, one of them was already uh, quite disintegrated. So at that point, um, we had to defend ourselves as Maddox, uh, as you can see here, his uh, visor was broken and mine was cracked by the actions of the creatures inhabiting the Vulcans. In retrospect, however, it does appear that they were possibly trying to reach out and talk to us. I see. And do we know how many people were on this planet before they decided to come along and terraform it? Maybe Q would know. It was a uh, Class H planet, and they were doing a surveillance, so I believe it was just the Vulcan Expeditionary Force. Which numbered about 15. And we did recover one of one of their number as well, who should be well enough to to speak with us probably in about a week. All right, I would enjoy being debriefed by that Vulcan. Um, please notify the families of the deceased Vulcan. We gathered any uh, identification we could find, and we will uh, notify notify next again. Um, beyond that, send this report to Starfleet and request another ambassadorial team for a new species. This keeps up, Captain. You'll be uh, known as the person that makes contact with everything. <laughs> Better than my last nickname. Very well. All right. And we sort of pan out from the ready room out, out into space as the Fenrir uh, slowly orbits the dark planet. And that's where we're going to end the session. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, for anyone who's curious, uh, that was partially uh, one of the new missions that is found in the Strange New World supplement. Uh, it is the Darkness mission. So... If you plan on uh, throwing this at your own players, I would actually recommend it. It's my favorite from the newest compendium. Uh, I, have, I obviously <laughs> tweaked it to suit our needs. Um, how you go through it may drastically change with your group. Uh, but that's where I'm going to end the stream. Uh, I am going to discuss uh, character advancement off stream with my players. But uh, we had a great turnout tonight. I want to thank everybody who showed up. Uh, you guys smashed my normal viewership numbers. So thank you tremendously for that. Um, hopefully, you know, what you've seen tonight is, uh, to your interest and I would love it if you dropped a follow sub, whatever, uh, and we see you in the future. But once again, thank you for turning out. Hopefully everybody had a good time and see you later stream. Bye. Good night. <laughs>